NASA has been told that the next planet we should send a dedicated probe to is Uranus. Let's take a quick look at that recommendation and the other planetary missions planned for the next decade or so. An influential report called the Planetary Science and Astrobiology Decadal Survey, which makes recommendations to NASA for future space missions and planetary probes, and whose recommendations are usually followed, has chosen Uranus as the target for the next flagship mission. The giant icy planet, number seven in the solar system and orbiting the sun at a massive 19 times further out than the Earth, has been closely visited only once before, during a flyby of the Voyager 2 probe in 1986, on its way out of the solar system. While the report says that completing the current mission of the Perseverance rover on Mars and the follow-up missions designed to bring back rock samples to the Earth must take priority, it then recommends funding a $4.2 billion mission to Uranus with a launch date in 2031 or 2032. It will seek to give us a better understanding of the atmosphere, formation and the composition of Uranus, which alongside Neptune are the least understood planets in the solar system. This mission is partly motivated by the recent spate of exoplanet discoveries, the majority of which seem to be in the Uranus size range. And so understanding these worlds and how they formed has reignited the urgency to understand Uranus. This mission was chosen over one to Neptune simply because of orbital convenience. If the launch does take place in the early 2030s, then the orbiter could grab a gravity assist from Jupiter to speed up the travel time and it could arrive in just 13 years, whereas no such speed up could happen on the way to Neptune, given where all the planets will be in their orbits during that launch window. Funding permitting, NASA was told to start preparing this mission immediately. The last decadal survey in 2011 recommended a Mars mission, which was realized in Perseverance, and a mission to Jupiter's moon Europa, which will launch in 2024. In that report, a Uranus mission came in third, so it's not a huge shock to see it top the recommendations this time. Personally, I hope we find evidence for why Uranus is the only planet in the solar system that orbits on its side, lazily rolling around the sun while all the other planets spin perpendicular to the orbital plane. I mean, it was probably just hit by a big thing long ago. That's always the answer in astronomy. But I hope we see evidence. Since the mission will be a probe that drops into Uranus and an orbiter that lives around Uranus, it won't have the capabilities to sneakily study Neptune at the same time. So a dedicated mission to Neptune will have to wait, but hopefully not for too long. All planets deserve love. The other missions recommended by this year's decadal survey include continued funding for the work on Mars and the Moon, including NASA's current Artemis program that will return humans to the lunar surface. Second to Uranus, and perhaps the biggest surprise of the report, is a $4.9 billion mission to study Saturn's tiny moon Enceladus. It's just 504 kilometers wide, but when the Cassini mission was visiting Saturn, it spotted plumes of salt water being ejected from alien volcanic activity in the rifts of the icy surface of Enceladus. This leads to the theory that there are salt water oceans under the surface of the moon, and the combination of volcanic activity and oceans, along with organic compounds detected in these jets by Cassini, make it a prime suspect for extraterrestrial life. And so studying it up close has a lot of appeal. The Enceladus mission in question is a hybrid orbiter and lander that will sample the plumes and observe the moon's surface for a year or two, and then land on the surface on its side. The landing site would likely be chosen to be somewhere with the water falling as snow to allow the onboard instruments to sample this water. And this would include a microscope and DNA sequencer to look for life. This idea of looking for life is another reason Uranus is our prime choice here as it has many moons which might also have subsurface oceans, and these could also be targeted as potential life-bearing places. Finally, we were also given a list of missions called New Frontiers missions, whose ideas should be developed, and then the missions should compete with each other for one funding spot. These are a mix of brand new concept and some that have returned from previous reports, and include a new probe of Saturn, a mission to return samples of the dwarf planet Ceres to Earth, a lander for Venus, an orbiter for Saturn's moon Titan, a lunar geophysical network, a mission to bring samples from comets back to us, and even a craft that would land on a centaur, which are small solar system objects between Jupiter and Neptune, and are believed to be able to tell us the composition of the very early solar system. Do let me know in the comment section which of these you'd be most excited for, or if Uranus is the one that steals your heart, or even let me know what mission you'd fund rather than any of these. Thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe on your way out if you enjoyed the video. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.